The other thing that happens is you start when you have a technology change. Convergence is really a way of let, saying, let's slam a bunch of things together here. And this is kind of a good example I found on an airline magazine. Anybody own this, this watch here? This, this watch has uh, you know, a complete weather station, including that's a little anemometer to measure the wind speed on your wrist. You know, important uh, kind of thing. But you know, they basically slammed a bunch of things together here and called it convergence. And, and that, as we saw before, you know, sometimes that, that works, and sometimes that doesn't work. And I think the thing that determines whether that works or not, for the most part, is it depends on the rate of, of technical change, not really the combined cost. The first arguments people will give you is why it's a good idea to put things together. Is they say, well, you know, it's a computer inside, and we can add some software, and it does this other stuff, and it's free. Right? We added this thing, you know, the software doesn't you have to develop the software, but adding the software doesn't cost anything. And now, oh, it, it did this other thing, and now it, it does the new thing, and it doesn't really cost anymore, so why wouldn't we put it in there? Um, the other rationale is typically, well, it takes up less space. So you get the, you know, the combined washer dryer thing, or same thing here. You say, well, this takes up less space in my pocket than you know, these two things put together. That's a, another common argument for a convergence. I think the real thing that determines whether something is going to be successful or not has to do with the rate of technological change. And the argument that I put these two things together, like with a clock radio, we, you know, Tom was the only one who's upgraded his clock radio uh, here. But you know, it, clocks aren't going to change that much. Radios aren't changing very much either. So when you buy the two together, it's not like you say, well, when I upgrade the radio, I'm going to have to throw away the clock because they're in one device. You know, that's not a big deal. TV VCRs, I think the reason we saw a lower incidence here and out in the real world, it's, it's even a smaller incidence, is people know pretty much that they, you know, I don't think they upgrade VCRs very fast, but TVs, you know, you're going to want a bigger screen TV. You're going to want maybe an HD TV. You're going to want a flat screen TV. There's been a lot of technological change in television over time. So you know if you get the combo TV VCR and you want to upgrade the TV, you basically got to throw away the VCR. So even though uh, if you ask people this, literally they don't always respond that way. When they people have an innate sense of value and they're cautious about um, adopting things where they're going to have to throw part of it away when the technology changes. So uh, I think that's one of the main determinants. So that benefit can't really be just two in one, because really, Two in one, a lot of times, unless you get some synergy from having the two together, is not an increased value. And you know, a good case in point is this calculator and the phone here. You know, everybody here had a phone. Everybody here has a calculator. Why is that? Well, it's probably easier to use the the calculator than it is to use the calculator in the phone. And people, you know, do people mind having two devices? No, they don't mind because it's it's easier to use. And the thing that many times people ignore when they think about converged devices is when you add multiple functions, it's basically har harder to use. You know, you've got to learn something about navigating it. And <clears throat> the cost of that learning, it is a cost for people to understand how to use it and to get to the function they want to get to right away. And so um, that's a disincentive to have convergence. Uh, I also have down here a picture. This was, a um, again, an airline magazine. This is the shower head that's way better because it has five shower heads in one. Uh, so I'm sure a lot of, how many people here have five shower head shower heads? Yeah. Nobody, OK. So it's, it's not, you know, more is not necessarily better. So converged devices, you got to look at, at those disincentives. You know, are you just adding more to it, or are you getting synergy out of it? And what's the rate of technical, technological change? Because if you've got to throw away part of what you bought it for to upgrade the other part, then it's not such a good value. For appliances, the, the kind of um, wrap against the appliance, well, it just does one thing. But that's a very kind of um, engineering-oriented approach. From the marketing approach, just doing one thing is, is actually pretty good because uh, there are really no mass markets. I mean, to say something is a mass market thing is basically to say, well, the market's not really defined. Because generally, as markets mature, they diverge. They don't 
convert. So, I mean, you can think about cars is, as an example. You know, there was the original you know, Model T, and you could have any color you wanted as long as it's black. And now think of all the segments in the car markets, you know, SUVs and compacts and minivans and sedans and luxury cars. And, you know, there's lots of different markets. And the same person could actually own pickup trucks and big size trucks and king cabs and all that stuff. You know, one person could own multiple devices because for what they want to use it for, something that's designed for segments can be better than something that's designed to do everything. And, you know, there are no, you know, luxury, well, there's probably one luxury sport pickup truck, you know, a Cadillac, whatever the, uh, their uh, Escalade pickup or whatever it's called. But, um, you know, <clears throat> products really diverge. And if you're going to make a product that has a whole bunch of benefits, I'll tell you, the hardest thing to do is communicate all the benefits that are in there. If you can say it's a phone, you know, that, that's a pretty easy thing to communicate and inexpensive from a company point of view. If you have to say, like with this one, well, it's, it's a phone and it's a PDA and it does email and it plays MP3. I mean, that's great, except that my just telling you that, if I tried to tell a lot of people that on television, that probably costs, you know, that's a $10 million ad campaign to get people to understand that it does all those things. So it's expensive to communicate. And then there's this cost versus value. You know, the cost to upgrade is really the true measure. If you're saying, well, it's great because this costs a little bit less than if I buy these two things separately, that's OK. But if I was going to upgrade either my phone or my PDA anyway, then I'm throwing away sort of half the value that, that might be in here. And there's the cost to use it. So utility versus simplicity. Generally, simplicity wins pretty much every time is you know, contingent upon value and all other things being equal, which they probably um, never are. A good example of this is you know, onboard computers and cars versus iDrive. You know, BMW did this great iDrive thing, and it, you know, they got the big screen and the fancy control, and it gives you access. You can go into their menus and find out you know, what's the temperature in your right rear tire if you wanted to, but you know, nobody probably really wants to do that. Um, and it makes it harder to use. So what's the biggest slam on uh, you know, the BMWs was they said, well, it's hard to use. Uh, in spite of the fact, nobody says, well, but it's got all this great utility. No, they say it's hard to use. And so BMW had to quickly revise the iDrive to make it easier to use. So you know, when you try and, and do the appliance thing, you know, convergence appliance, say, well, I'm going to do convergence because it's got this great value. Somebody could be gaining on you in the rearview mirror because they've got something that's much easier to communicate, much easier to understand. So if you're you know, driving on the road and you see a, an F-16 coming up your tailpipe, they might be gaining on you really quickly. So you've got to watch out for, for that as you go along. <clears throat> 